When you give a motorcycle rider an action camera, you generally get some pretty nice footage, scenic views, and probably a motovlog here and there. But what do you get when you give them 360 degree footage? Well, you get 360 degree footage. Now I have eyes everywhere and I don't have to worry about missing any angles because everything is in frame all the time. This is Insta360's camera 1R. Like the base building blocks of DNA, you assemble this modular camera pretty much any way you want to suit your filming needs, battery base, 360 lens, and touchscreen. But you get the idea. The 1R is different because it captures 360 degree video with lenses on both sides of the camera and then stitches the videos together in post-production. So let's see what this thing can do on a motorcycle. Insta360 specifically sent me the 1R camera with the motorcycle bundle of accessories to try out for you guys. I tested out a few of the pieces and mounts on my motorcycle. I tried the handlebar mount. I tried the top of my helmet mount, which is aptly named the unicorn mount. For those of you that are new to the motorcycling space, unicorns are what we call female riders. So I'm definitely qualified to wear this mount. And I also tried a mount on the passenger seat. So let's see what we think about this 360 degree camera. Is it actually useful to a biker? Like any other biker that's obsessed with taking photos and videos of their bike, of course I had to see how this camera compares to the GoPro, which is not 360 degrees, but is the camera that I usually film on. The obvious difference is no 360 degree video from my Hero 7. If you want 360 degree video from the GoPro, you'll have to buy the bulky looking Hero Max. But if you look at the footage quality overall, I agree with the majority of the videos that are already out there. There really isn't a very noticeable difference. And if you have the memory card for it, you can get 360 degree footage at 5.7K. Now I was using this tiny 64 gig memory card to film on the 1R, but if you wanted to film for a longer period of time, you would definitely need a bigger memory card because I'm pretty sure you would run out of space on the memory card before you actually ran out of battery. Now watching the reviews on this thing is fine and all, but most of the people reviewing the 1R are photographers and videographers, but I'm a motorcycle rider, so I care more about how I'm gonna be using this camera on my motorcycle rather than like walking around a city and holding a selfie stick to get 360 degree shots of buildings. So what's it like to actually use this thing if you're a biker? Well, the start and record buttons are fairly easy to access with my gloves on, but the touchscreen is a bit too small to be handling with the biker gloves on. So if you're going to be making any adjustments, do it before you put your gloves on. Because after your gloves are on, the touchscreen is pretty much unusable. Or you can also connect the camera to the Insta360 phone app, which is easier to use if you have touchscreen enabled gloves. Since you have a 360 field of view, you don't really have to worry about which way you point the camera to guarantee you'll be in the shot. But if you wanted to see a quick preview while you ride, can you? Well, it turns out that you can see a preview because you can connect it to your phone and have your phone on the motorcycle while you ride. Okay, because this is a modular system, you can turn the camera around to see the preview screen if you're using the 360 degree lens. Or if you're using the one inch lens to vlog, you can just turn the touchscreen unit around. Okay, but what if you get stuck in the rain with this thing? Yep, that's also okay. It's waterproof up to five meters when it's fully assembled. So as long as you're not taking the different pieces apart and then getting them wet, you should be good to go. All right, but can it be used for motovlogging? The one thing I hate so much about the newer GoPros is that if you want nice clean audio from them, you need to have the bulky media mod for your microphone connection. And that also has to be attached to your helmet. So I'm definitely not the first or last motovlogger to complain about the media mod, but can the 1R be a replacement? Well, this is the sound that I'm getting on the 1R with their microphone adapter when I use the same microphone that I usually motovlog with. Well, I'm really hoping this audio works. Hey, it's editing Lally here with some feedback on the mode of logging audio. So it seems like it's really low coming out of the camera. However, I watched a video by Motonocity who seems to have gotten this setup down for moto vlogging. So I'm gonna refer you guys over to his video. So I think it's setup dependent and how you have your microphone positioned inside your helmet and all that. So right now I wouldn't use the 1R with the uh, one inch lens for moto vlogging until I figure out a setup that works a little bit better. My plan was actually to go and test a new setup today, but as you can tell, um, that might not happen. <laughs> so we'll have to wait a little bit on the boat of vlogging update. 
Okay, but what about those epic 360 shots? How do you get those? Well, there's a few ways, but the easiest way is to download their app and let the auto stitch and auto effects do all the work for you. And in the end, you only need to download the finished clips that you want to use, which is great because the file sizes can get pretty big. There's also a software package you can download on your computer and a plugin for Premiere Pro if you want to do things manually and you do use Premiere Pro. My preferred way was to use their Android app and export only the finished clips I needed since the file sizes were big and the Easy app is what makes the Insta360 stand out in my opinion. This works kind of well, but if you want to use any of their automated shot lab features and you have an Android, you can forget about that. While the iOS app seems to be okay, the Android app is full of bugs, like half translated instructions, missing buttons, and they make big portions of the app unusable in my opinion, and so I had a frustrating time using it. But you're in luck if you have an iPhone as the iOS app doesn't seem to have any of those problems. So ultimately, what do I think of this 360 degree camera? I can get cool 360 degree footage of myself riding, which I've never been able to do before. I can also attach it to any of my GoPro mounts, including the one on my helmet, but I can't operate it very easily with gloves on, so that will require some thought before I'm all geared up. I also need to consider a bigger size memory card if I plan on filming for longer periods of time on this thing. But I do like the variety of mounts that you can do with the motorcycle bundle and the unicorn mount which goes on top of the helmet. Overall this is a fun little camera and if you're considering getting one for 360 degree footage I would definitely say that it competes with the GoPro. Right now I saw on their website Insta360 has some holiday sales going on so if you want to know more about those I'll leave a link to them in the description. Ultimately I appreciate this camera for what it is and for letting me experience my riding from a different perspective. If you want to know more about how I improve my riding experience you can check out these videos and we'll talk more in the next one.